other than a brief stop at Arches Provincial Park, the journey north to Pistolet Bay was pretty uneventful. Pistolet Bay Provincial Park was the first provincial campground that we had stayed on in Newfoundland, but it was as well equipped as the campgrounds in the National Park. With a comfort station, with hot and cold water, free showers and a cooking shelter for tent campers in rainy weather. And boy, did we have some rainy weather. We spent a full day just sitting in a Land Rover to avoid the worst of the weather. And I couldn't even fly my drone. But never mind, there were some other things I could do instead. But once the rain eased up, we set off to explore the area. Hello, it is the 24th of June and I'm wearing four layers of clothing. We are sheltering from a little sprinkle. Well, it's we cold. Were, I think we've been quite lucky. There was a massive thunderstorm, <sighs> but we've only just caught the edge of it. We just took shelter behind this rock, the winds blowing from behind us. Um, but we are at the very, nearly at the very top of Newfoundland. We, we We're could, in Onion Cove, don't you Onion know? Onion Cove, yes. We <laughs> camped last night at Pistolet Bay and uh, we've come for a little drive out and to do a walk this morning called Trina's Trail, whoever Trina, Trina is. is. Um, and uh, the views up here are spectacular. The bay where we've parked our vehicle and uh, the rocks, the mist and the cloud was coming in, it started to clear and all down in front, if I spin you around I can show you, this is definitely what they call Iceberg Alley. 15 I counted. 15. Well, some really in the distance but the clouds covering it. But we had to, we had to rush to get our waterproofs on and take shelter behind this rock. Chrissy, Chrissy's just got her newly acquired crochet... <laughs> From a little old lady! ...hairband. <laughs> and uh, didn't want to get it wet, no. so... Keep your ears warm. So I, I didn't of... think I'd need it in June, but I do. We've been told this is the worst June they've had in Newfoundland for over 40 years. So aren't we lucky to be here at this time? <laughs> but... We are lucky to be but here. But we are. Look at this. Who gets to see views like this? The following day, the weather was wonderful, so we set out to have some breakfast. We had some exciting plans for the next couple of days. So while we have breakfast and enjoy the weather and the views, let me update you of our plans. Firstly, after breakfast, we would visit the nearby Lance or Meadows National Historic Site and then the following day, we would be travelling out to Carpoon Island to stay at Carpoon Lighthouse Inn for a couple of nights. But I'll get to that later. Just a few minutes drive from where we were having our breakfast stands this impressive statue of Leif Erikson. It is believed that he and some of his people were the first ever Europeans to set foot in North America around 1,000 years ago even before Christopher Columbus. The story goes that Eric the Red, an explorer exiled from his home in Norway, had convinced groups of people to follow him on an expedition for new land. Unfortunately, not all that set sail for pastors new had a smooth crossing, and one group in particular drifted south in a storm. 
They spotted mysterious land along the way, noting that it couldn't have been the land that they set sail for, and continued to get back on course to eventually land in their original destination, Greenland. Upon their arrival, word was spread about the land that had been sighted, but this discovery wasn't of immediate interest to the new Greenland settlers, as they had just arrived and were establishing themselves in their new home. While the population in Greenland was increasing, habitable land was not. So nearly a decade later, Eric the Red's son, Leif Eriksson, set off to explore the aforementioned land. Known for being farmers, colonists and explorers, the Norse used Lancel Meadows primarily as a seasonal base camp. After arriving, they proceeded to build Viking communal houses made out of sod walls and timber and sod roofs. The Norse used Lancel Meadows to repair boats with timber that wasn't available on Greenland and to take supplies of furs, fish and timber back to the Greenland home. It is estimated that they occupied the land for a total of 10 years over the course of a 30 year time period. I'm amazed they even found the place at all. Leaving Lancel Meadows, we had just enough time to take the short Camel's Back Trail to a scenic viewpoint before heading back to camp for our big day tomorrow. Good afternoon. Firstly, let me apologise for the wind. Um, <laughs> Too many beans last night. Oh, I tend to think what you're going to say. Well, uh, hopefully the wind isn't going to. Hold on, we didn't have beans last <laughs> night. <laughs> hopefully the wind isn't going to make too much noise on this. But we are on an island called, or it's pronounced Carpoon Island. It's spelt Q U I R P O N, Queerpon, but it's spelt Carpoon. It's an uninhabited island, but it has at the very end of it a lighthouse. And with the lighthouse is an inn. And it's possible to come out, you can get a boat ride out like, like we just did. got around about a five and a half to six kilometre hike to get to the lighthouse. Uh, we're the only ones on this hike. I, I don't think there's many people on this island at all at the moment. And it's, despite it being windy, it is a beautifully bright blue sky day and we've just come over this hill and look what we can see. So in the far distance, I'm not sure how clear this is on the video, but in the far distance you can see land and that's Labrador, the province of Labrador. And not uh, that little island to the left. No, this, this is the that Labrador. <laughs> Where's your finger? Where, where's my finger? <laughs> up, uh, up there. <laughs> that's a big finger. Oh, it's, no, no. <laughs> Labrador is in the far distance. There's this island just here. Let's get that out of the way. I There's an island. I didn't think that that was Labrador. Behind that and all along the back there is the province of Labrador. And dotted around all over the place are some modestly sized icebergs. And these break off from a glacier in Greenland and some are massive, some are tiny and they follow a route that has become known as Iceberg Alley which is where they run over the north side of Newfoundland. 
and we when we get to the lighthouse now the lighthouse is can we show you the lighthouse is just there i think in that, in that, in that dip. bit there oh in that bit yeah in that dip there's yeah. a lighthouse there and just to the right of the lighthouse are two lovely big icebergs Mm, they don't look big on the phone. They but don't look so they big here, big. but they are huge. Bigger than your house. Oh, way bigger than your house. Yeah. So tomorrow, I'm sure, if they're still hanging around, we'll be going to give them a little visit. It will depend on the wind. Yeah, it depends on the wind and the waves. But it's beautiful out here. Right on the top of Newfoundland. We're going to spend the next couple of nights here. Uh, first night tonight, they, they, we all get dinner here. Uh, tomorrow we'll get breakfast and lunch. And around 11 o'clock, we're being taken out on a Zodiac boat to go and see some of these majestic icebergs right up close and personal. Uh, and if we're lucky enough, maybe the odd whale or two, although we have heard, we have seen some whales, but we, we've been early. told it's a bit early and there's yeah. not too many around. But the views on this island are stunning. Well, end of, just about at the end of the six mile hike, six miles, six kilometre hike, and there's home for the night. We've been told there's around uh, us two and four other guests staying here tonight, and then tomorrow he's got a full house. Apparently there's 22 guests tomorrow, so better have a big dinner tonight because we might be fighting for a share tomorrow. Uh, and then let's hope that this wind, this a wicked wind up here, Let's hope this has died down by the, by the morning when we go out on our boat ride. But anyway, let's go and see if we can see an iceberg from our bedroom window. Anybody home? Oh, hi. You made it. We were just passing. <laughs> hi. I'm Patty. Thelma. Oh, no. Thelma, Thelma? Velma. Velma. Oh, do you know what? Well, uh, Velma's sister-in-law, Wavy. Yeah. yeah. We met her at Pistol Bay. Oh, yeah. And yeah. we told her to come and she said, oh, Velma's here. Yeah. And you look very similar to her, I would think. Oh, yeah, because I was the first. I recognise you. Yeah. <laughs> the two Patsies told us that dinner would be served in an hour's time which left us just enough time for a bit of local exploring. After dinner, it was time to settle down for the evening with a book and a most appropriately named beer. The 
following morning, it was suggested that we accompany the departing guests back to the harbour so our iceberg tour could begin straight away, as the weather forecast was showing the weather closing in later that morning. The day had got off to a good start with a sighting of an arctic fox close to the lighthouse. And the iceberg viewing also started off well. So what are the dark stripes? They can be a couple of sources. One is these are glaciers that are sliding over to over land. So if they go near open uh, land, then dirt can blow on them. But the other thing that can happen is there could be like a volcanic eruption. Remember when that one erupted in Iceland a few years ago? Yeah. So that would have laid down in Iceland. Uh huh. They can now go through glaciers, icebergs, and drill down through them and say, okay, this is when the soup is erupted. This is when Despite our attempts to get off to an early start, the weather was gradually getting worse, making viewing quite challenging. It's easier, it's bouncier the further forward you go. Oh, come back in! Don't you bring it this way! <laughs> It wasn't long before we had to head back to shore and it's just as well we did because in addition to the wind and waves the fog had started to come in. The change in weather did, I have to say, make for some great photographic opportunities. And while I was occupied, Chrissy took the opportunity for her short break to read her book from the viewing room. Morning. Uh, time here on Carpoon Island has come to an end. We are leaving in very different conditions to what we arrived in. Uh, we were very lucky to have good weather yesterday, but today uh, the weather has closed in and we're now leaving this little harbour here uh, and heading back to the dock where the vehicle's parked. And for the rest of the day, we've got the excitement of doing laundry and shopping and organising. Bum bum bum. With all goodbyes said and done, our next stop was St Anthony's to top up our provisions and take a quick look at yet another lighthouse. That night, we would return to Pistolet Bay Provincial Park before making our way south the following morning. We had a choice on the return journey, to either retrace our steps down the 430 coastal road, or to take a more circular route and use the opportunity to visit a small fishing town called Conch. Guess which one we took?
Well, we've left the Pistolet Bay campsite this morning and we're heading south, but we've decided to take a detour and come uh, the long way round and to come over to the coast here in what's called the French Shore. And this just down here that you can see now with a lovely little iceberg parked beside it is the small town of Conch. This used to be a, a French fishing coast, the French shore here. The uh, ownership of towns or villages, whatever you want to call them, has changed hands many times over the years. And, and I think the English have had a lot to play in that. And at one point, I think it was the Treaty of Versailles, it was agreed that the French could have the rights for fishing down the west coast. And so there are a bit further down, there's towns called port au -Choix. Um, this is Conch. There's a, there's a lot of uh, Frenchy names around here um, based on that history. But we thought it might be, we were, we were told it was quite a picturesque, beautiful area to come and visit. And it looks like it would be if it wasn't for the pesky weather again. We left in rain, the fog's rolling in. Actually, looks very beautiful over there. The fog is rolling in there. Um, rain is coming in on, from the other side. I think if you turn around, Chris, and look behind us, that sky does not look the best of colors. Um, down in the town of Conch, uh, we've been told there's a tapestry. It's, it's sort of similar-ish to the Bayou tapestry, but it's about 22 feet long. No, I thought it was 222. I can't believe it's that long. That sounds horrendously long. 22 feet long, I thought. Ah, oh, okay. Um, telling the story of this region here uh, from prehistory right through to modern day. And uh, this, this tapestry is actually, at times, has travelled to different places around the world. Um, but we're going to go and see that and we're going to perhaps go and have a, a bit closer look, if we can, at that lovely blue-looking iceberg down there. Get away from some of these flies. doesn't want me waffling on about icebergs. She wants me to make a public apology about the fact that the tapestry is 222 feet long and not 22 feet long as I suggested. So Chrissy, I publicly apologize for the first time ever. came to Newfoundland to hopefully get to see a number of things that we wouldn't normally see. Things like icebergs and moose and small pretty fishing harbour villages and rough coastal waters and beautiful scenery, meet some wonderful people. And I'm re uh, really, really pleased to say we have succeeded in all of that. But there are two particular things that will probably stick in our mind more than anything about this trip to Newfoundland. The first is the weather. Now we came in April and April and May were pretty grotty and everybody kept telling us, well, it's winter here, it's to be expected. But you'll notice the change in June and by the time July comes, we'll be full on into summer. But today is the last day of June. And we're hearing that this is the worst June on record for 40 years here. Um, now, nobody can do anything about the rain and obviously we just have to live with that and make the most of it. But the 
the other thing that we remember this place for is potholes. The whole island is riddled with potholes. Probably except the TCH, the Trans Canada Highway, the, the main highway there, but uh, uh, potholes are everywhere. And we, and with the and the combination of rain filling potholes means you can't see them. And this journey south that we're taking today, we're heading down to Shallow Bay in, in the Gross Morn area. And that's a one night stop and then we're moving on again tomorrow morning. But this journey we've been having today has been constantly, once we left Conch, it's been in the rain and we've hit pothole after pothole. God knows what damage is doing to our suspension and our, and I just hope our new rear diff is holding up to all of this. But uh, yeah, it's pretty bad. I guess that it's, uh, there's a lot of miles of road here um, to be funded for by a relatively small population but um, it does not make for pleasant driving. On our next video we return to Harry's Harbour where we became honorary newfies. Uh, good morning we're from the BBC <laughs> and we're looking to film the lives of everyday newfie folk. Uh, do you happen to know any normal newfie? <laughs> 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 